But yeah, they carrying the soul of leadership. Um, that 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 stuff actually came from. I was doing my dissertation on my doctoral program, and I was interviewing a couple of people, and then I I met this young man. So while I was uh, talking to, and uh, in my conversation with him, this young man, he just said something that really hit me. So he said, so I asked him about questions about what are the behaviors that will make you to share knowledge and everything and all, because my topic was uh, knowledge share, the leadership behaviors and knowledge sharing. Okay. So I was asking him what are the leadership behaviors that can make you to share your knowledge or not share your knowledge, basically. And he said, he said, you know, he said, if the person above me does not care, hmm. why should I? Wow. So, and, you know, I had that <laughs> word, you know. I mean, as uh, again, my focus then was on my dissertation, but I mean, because the place from where I was, I mean, interviewed the person to my house is like an hour plus drive. So as I was kind of thinking through and the work just keep hitting me that if the person above me does not care, why should I? I mean, I kept that work within myself for another almost a year, finished my dissertation before I go to write my book and everything. And uh, and 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 the, the, the focus of that is uh, the caring is the soul of leadership. If the person does not care, if the leader does not care, why bother? Why sh why should wow. others care anyway? I think like, was it last week or so? I was talking about moving from corruptible to incorruptible. Mm. And I asked everyone. I said that, do you complain about the government of your, of your country? Of Almost course, the, of their hands. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And I asked them a question. I said. If a member of your family or your friend is doing something bad and uh, you don't complain about what they do, if they are stealing money from the government or they are having bad behaviors, if you don't call them out on it, you have no right to call out the government because bad behavior starts at our doorsteps. Very cool. Very good. And we and, and we don't talk about these things. We don't we don't really get into them because yeah, uh, oh uh, somebody stole money. Uh, uh, this person is my is my family friend. Let's cover it up. That's how corruption grows. It gets worse and worse. I mean the case that's, that's how the things that we've seen over the years and everything is. And then you if you call people out, you become their enemy. We don't do that. That's that, again. Those are the things. And you know, over time, we've turned that bad behaviors into being nice. Hello, DG. Hi, good afternoon. Good oh, afternoon. sorry, good afternoon from here. <laughs> yes, good evening from here. <laughs> yeah. How's uh, Minnesota? Well, Minnesota is uh, we are well and alive. It's okay. getting colder gradually, but today actually is a very good day. The temperature is a little bit warm, so we always enjoy the warm as much as we can before it gets yeah. cold. <laughs> yeah. Yes. See. You guys are very close to Chicago on the on on on, on your east. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So a, yes. Yeah. So so for, for Minnesota, you get to Wisconsin and then you get to Illinois, yeah. which is Chicago, yeah. basically. So yes. It's five hours drive from from where from where I live. It's five hours drive. Okay. And also the, the place where we had to, if I'm going to Winnipeg in Canada, so which mm -hmm. is my, my yeah, neighbor just province up there. Yeah. Yeah. From from where I live is seven hours drive, wow. but the border itself is six hours drive. So I'm kind of I can, yeah. You guys are driving in that in that country, eh? Yeah? You yeah, like it's pretty. You guys like, like to like to drive, yeah. We do, we do. It's it's, it's part of our life, though. We, yes. I mean, as much as I always think that maybe actually, I think it's political too. Mm. You know, the politics is like, oh, I mean, they are coming to take your truck away. <laughs> 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 See, the, the U.S. did a lot of work expanding uh, road transport after World War II. So yeah. it, it has be, be, driving and cars became a big portion of the economy. You know, yeah. yeah. So uh, the, the history of, of countries are, are amazing. Of course. Yeah, thank you, thank you for being here, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank yeah, you very well, much. I appreciate it. Thank, thanks for having me. All right, so did you, let's start. Uh, please uh, introduce yourself and uh, tell my audience your name and what you do. Well, thank you very much for having me today. Uh, my name is Ayo Deji. 
Emmanuel Oyebola. So let me just go full and <laughs> tell you. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a consultant, I'm a, uh, we call it OD, Organization Development Consultant, and uh, I mean, I my own central, because again, there are areas of specialization in that work, so yeah. my own yeah. central is I focus on leadership development, uh, I, I mean, have leadership coaching, leadership training, I do a lot of work on process improvement, yeah. uh, organization um if they have structural issues, if they have uh, maybe they are going through challenges of culture and everything. So that's kind of my area of, uh, I mean, uh, transforming organizations for better, helping them to, again, whether it was on human side or on process side, because mm. again, there's human side and process side of things. So those are the kind of work that I mean that I do mostly. And uh, and, and in some, on some time too, I do help small businesses too. Yeah. In some ways, because again, whether they want to set up their business or they want to really move to the next level, what do they want to do? So I do work with, uh, it's called Small Business Development Council here in um, in uh, in the US. Yeah. So I do help them, which I mean, they provide free services for people, but they, I mean, but they pay the consultants. So I do that kind of work too. So that's kind of my area of specialization and yeah. uh, my business area as well. Nice. So Tom, you, you have a company. What, what's it called? Yes. It's called M Right, M Right Business Management and Consulting. M Right. So, and that's uh, I can that's that's basically from uh, the M days for my middle name Emmanuel. Yeah. And uh, so, and then the right is more by doing the doing business the right way. So that's kind of what it is. So that's playing behind nice. that. So yeah, also an a an a, a, an auto. Yeah. Yes. Well, yes. Tell, tell me a little bit about your book. Yeah, I mean, my book is uh, Caring the Soul of Leadership. And uh, actually, I have another one in the works now that I'm working on. It's on human relationship. I'm okay. hoping that will come out very soon, time permitting. But yeah, the Caring the Soul of Leadership, um, I mean, I, that, that that stuff actually came from, I was doing my dissertation on my doctorate program, and I was interviewing a couple of people. And then I, I met this young man, so while I was uh, talking to yeah. So, uh, like I was saying about the book, it came from my interview with uh, one of uh, one of the people I was talking to, and uh, in my conversation with him, this young man, he just said something that really hit me. So he said, so I asked him about questions about what are the behaviors that will make you to share knowledge and everything and all, because my topic was uh, knowledge share, leadership behaviors and knowledge sharing. Okay. So I was asking him, what are the leadership behaviors that can make you to share your knowledge or not share your knowledge, basically? And he said, he said, you know, he said, if the person above me does not care, mm. why should I? Wow. So, and, you know, I had that <laughs> word, you know, and, I mean, as uh, again, my focus then was on my dissertation, but I mean, because the place from where I was, I mean, interviewed the person to my house is like an hour plus drive. So as I was kind of thinking through, and the work just keep hitting me that if the person above me does not care, why should I? I mean, I kept that work within myself for another almost a year. Finished my dissertation before I go to write my book and everything. And uh, and 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 the, the, the focus of that is the caring is the soul of leadership. If the person does not care, if the leader does not care, why bother? Why sh why should wow. others care anyway? So and I and then I start to break it down into Caring for vision. If you have, if you don't have a vision, why do you lead? Caring for your assignments. The assignment that you have. Again, all of us have assignments. Whether it's your, it's your job, whether it's your business, whether it's a position that you have, you have your assignments. Yeah. You care for that. Do you have a vision for that assignment? So, vision for assignment. And then I go to caring for results. You know, one thing that I've seen in many places, especially on social media these days, is. Uh, be nice, be good. <laughs> I always yeah. tell everyone, if you're a leader and somebody employ you, I said, no, your number one, what they're expecting from you is results. No result, they'll fire you. It's as simple as that. Mm. Now, I'm not saying don't do it the right way. Uh, be nice to people. But don't don't get into all these, uh, uh, all these uh, sand bites of just be kind. Just Some people don't even know the difference between kindness and niceness and actually helping people. Yeah. I said, I said, if I'm kind to you and you are doing something wrong, I'm not going to spare your emotions by not telling you. I will tell you. That's me being nice to you. That's me being kind to you. And if I employ you to work with me, 
And from your perspective, you think that, I mean, being nice is you don't come to work, you're not productive. I'm sorry, I'll get rid of you because I'm being nice to you to go and rethink your life. <laughs> it, it, it sounds mean, but the reality is if I'm not performing and there is no results, they will get rid of me. It's as simple as that. And I wrote more about that as well, about caring for people too and everything. So because again, people are the reasons why we have organizations in the establishment. People come first. But at the same time, we cannot lose vision. I mean, when we care for people, the people that we care for are the ones we hold accountable. They are the ones that we want to grow. They are the ones that we want to take to the next level. But if you just say, I mean, just, I mean, you are doing bad, you're not coming to work, and I'm being, I'm not, I'm not actually being nice to you. I'm destroying your life. That's the way well, I say it. Well, but see, unfortunately, people think being over nice, not telling someone what they are doing to improve themselves. You are, you are trying to shake them from difficult conversation. And you think you are, you are helping them. Hmm. See, I think it's this, this is everywhere. Those of us that tell people the truth are bad people. Yeah. And in the long run, not telling people the truth will, will actually hurt them in the long run. Yeah. It, will, it will destroy people's lives. But right now, uh, caring by not telling people things yeah. we think is right. How did you, how how did we get here? I, I I mean I think there are a couple of things that we need to look at. Uh, I mean, and I was let, let me first talk about it from African perspective. Okay. We are both Africans, we have that perspective. This is common in African culture. Somebody is older than you. Yes. So they are doing something bad. And then if you call them out on it, they will say you are disrespectful. Yes. If you, if, if you ask me today, what got many African countries to the place where we are today is that behavior. Ooh. Is that perspective. Ooh. Many people who don't like this. They don't have to. I'm not, you know, the, the case is, I mean, I, 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 there's a part that I don't say also, I'm a preacher as well. I preach in the church and everything. Mm. I don't preach so that people like me and everything. But by the but over time, when you see the light of the truth, you will come to the light of the truth. Every time we always, somebody is doing, and I, I, I think, like, was it last week or so, I was talking about moving from corruptible to incorruptible. Mm. And I ask everyone, I say that, do you complain about the government of your, of your country? Of Almost course, the, of their hands. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And I asked them a question. I said, if a member of your family or your friend is doing something bad and uh, you don't complain about what they do, if they are stealing money from the government or they are having bad behaviors, if you don't call them out on it, you have no right to call out the government because bad behavior starts at our doorsteps. Very good, cool. very good. And we and, and we don't talk about these things. We don't we don't really get into them because yeah, uh, oh uh, somebody stole money. Uh, uh, this person is my is my family friend. Let's cover it up. That's how corruption grows. It gets worse and worse. I mean the case that's some of the things that we've seen over the years and everything is. And then you if you call people out, you become their enemy. We don't do that. That's that again. Those are the things. And over time, we've turned that bad behaviors into being nice. Yes. Now let's take it on a global scale. As the as the, as the, as the world is switching around, things are changing and everything and all the stuff. People have turned lies into truth. Mm. They've made the assumption that okay, because uh, well, uh, well, you you know you know I was looking at something one day. There is there was this person that faked their own disappearance and everything and all the stuff. Oh yeah, 
that that lady yeah. yes 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 and and then and then somebody said well let's not blame her uh, some people are saying that this person is actually impacting what we call the true dei because it's painting her in, a, in the wrong picture yeah and then and 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 then, and then somebody said let's not be, i said it doesn't matter i don't care what a person is going through everything that they put together is a lie why would you lie for what and then people think you are being nice to them and everything. The case is, I'm not saying that we should be, but the only thing is, let's not glorify what she did. It doesn't help everybody that is actually going through, because people are getting lost every day. Yes. They are looking for people. Why should we divide resources to someone that's not actually lost, that only just wants to create attention for herself? And she did, she did it in a very elaborate way. Exactly. Very elaborate way. So, so those are again because we have all these behaviors this day about being being we, we've replaced being uh, being truthful for the or, 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 or not being straightforward or not actually call things the way they are we've turned into being nice hmm. and now because I mean there is a between politeness and nice that people call nice anyway yes. because I'm not I mean I'm for politeness. Yep. Whatever it is, let's be polite. Let's have a yep. civil society. Let's have everything. But part of politeness also is whoever is doing something bad, we call them out. So they don't become a cancer to our system. Those mm. are the things that we have seen. And that's what we see these days. Everybody is evolving on the way of just see the truth. Don't say it. Just be quiet. And then we complain that things are getting worse. So when yeah. we get worse from here, I'm going to tell you. Now, Talking about that, you posted a comment which I want to I want us to read. Let me let me let me bring it in. Let me see. I saw this and I read your comment. It's powerful. See, it says perception is reality, but not always the truth. Okay, that's one side, but the most powerful bit is your uh, added comment. Can you can you read that? Yes, uh, perception is an individual observation that's usually shaped by emotions, experience, and sometimes incomplete information. Many of us are driven to act by our perceptions. We are convinced of what we see, hear, feel, and think, rather than looking for the truth. So I said, as you go about your journey this week, it's always my Monday motivation. Do your best to make, do your best not to make decisions based on what you hear, what you see, hear, feel, or think. Perceptions can be deceptive because they align with who we are and how we think. Truth, on the other hand, may not align with what we perceive. But it liberates us, liberates us from, liberates us and point us in the right direction. When harmed with the truth, we can make better decisions. Let your decisions be based on the truth, on truth this week. Wow. DG, when I saw this yes. and I read it, I just said, wow. It's, it's powerful. You see, there are a lot of things going on in the world and many of us just take it take what we are told the the simple explanation nobody very little very few pe pe people dig deeper to see where is this thing coming from? What happened? Mm -hmm. Nobody cares. All they care about is what is a motive. This person uh -huh. slapped this person. Nobody cares about what happened before the slap. I mean, how can we help people to go beyond perception, to seek the truth, and and in fact, why is it is is that even important? 
Thank you. Uh, you know, the truth is what I've learned uh, over my years of experience. I mean, I, I, I will share this, which is pretty interesting. You know, I was doing a doctoral program. And then as we start that, that class, you know, the first thing they told us, they said, you don't know anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this program, this program will teach you that you don't know anything. But this program also will teach you to find what you don't know. Okay. Now, the, the, the reason why I brought that up is because, you know, as uh, you know, as in the, the moment we get to a certain level of education, sometimes we might be deceived that we know a lot of things. But, uh, but the funny thing is what we think we know until we dig deeper yeah. and remove our emotions, remove our experience, remove everything, that's actually when we find what we call the truth. You know, the case is, I mean, for example, if you tell me something right now, if it goes with my belief, I will not question it. Mm, yeah. That's very common with all of us. That's yes. what we do. But if it's contrary to what we believe, sometimes we outrightly reject it, then actually take time to really ask ourselves, is this really true? You know, the funny thing about it is, this is one of the funny things, somebody come to you and the person just praise you, hey, you're a good person and everything. On average, we don't question those things. Yeah. I don't know if it was or not. But if somebody come to criticize us, now there are two reactions to that. We can actually just say, yeah, they're just, they just jealous. But we can ask ourselves, can that be true? Yeah. Then we just start digging deeper into, let me look into my behavior. But that's only for people that can reflect. Yes. Same thing also comes to the truth because for ex now, the, everything that we see in politics, everything that we see in the world today, Politics mostly are full of half truth or absolute lies. <laughs> That's you, you know, and and again, even even from even for many things that we see, whether in places of work, in many places and everything, there are things that we are not told. There are things that we don't know. Yeah. But until we take time to really look at the the thing that we even call facts, remove our emotions from it whether we agree with it or not, whether we think it makes sense or not, and then we start digging for what actually is the truth. We gather information because until you gather information, you sift through all this information and figure out which one is relevant to what you're looking for. On average, we also just keep acting on emotions. Yeah, I've seen people whereby somebody come to them and say, hey, you know, AKA hey, is this bad guy and every time all this. Oh yeah, I was thinking the same because again, they have the same mindset. You know, I was thinking the same thing too, but the, then sit back and say, okay, this person just came to tell me this person is a bad person. Did I even take, is that really true? Did I even look at the, what this person told me and try to figure out? Can yeah. I even call Akine and say, Akine, this person said you did this and everything. Tell me what your own side of the story. Yeah. But on average, what most people do is, I was thinking the same thing too. <laughs> that's just yeah. really good. And that's where our problems are these days when it comes to them because on average, we only live by perceptions. Now, they say perception is reality. Everything, what you will see right now, it might look like it, but actually, most of the time, it's not even it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you... it's, it's, that's, that's what I was trying to drive to with people is because the moment you make a decision on your emotions, on average, you make wrong decisions. Yeah. And this hit me hard because it drives to why I have this podcast. Mm. You see, I talk to a lot of young Africans. Majority of the things they say and believe are based on pure perceptions and emotion. And very, very few are interested in digging deeper. Even to pick up a book on the subject and read, they don't want to do, do it. They just go with stories. They hear from their friends or family or whatever. Pick Most up on social media. Pick up a book. Mm -hmm. At least read a book. You get more information. Maybe 
then you ask yourself, is this even true? Okay, pick up another book on that subject. By the time you read three, four books on that subject, you, you start getting to the, to the core of it. But very few of us want to do it. And for me, see, I believe this century is Africa's century. But we will make a big mistake if we continue making decisions on perception, on emotion. Many of us believe certain things about Africa that doesn't 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 align with any reasonable facts but what we want to believe it now the thing is this a lot of young people also have issue that recognizes this that now we were colonized yes they did bad things to us yes but the kind of things they hold on to are not useful to us as Africans. They're not going to help us develop. And as long as you hold those thoughts, those beliefs, without questioning them, we are making a big mistake and we're giving the same colonizer more power power over us and those are the things that concerns me when i see i see many of us this our future holding on to things based on emotion and perception so that's uh when i when i read that post i was it hit me see wow yeah. this is very powerful thank you for that as a coach, okay, you work as a consultant, you work with a lot of people. Uh, I'm a coach and I work with a lot of people. And uh, one thing I, I frequently find is that uh, many individuals that come to me for help, for assistance, the first thing I noticed about them and the issues they have is that very few of them have any goal. Okay, either individual goal or even goals for their business. And you see, if you don't have a destination, that's go your goal, where you're going to, how would you get there? <laughs> now, now, now this question, what, what have you what what's your own, own experience with, with your clients the people you work with you know i, I mean it's uh i would say it varies let me mm. just just put it that way because i mean there are some people that i work with that they know where they are going okay. they know where they are going good but they are trying to navigate the place you have that those people you have some that don't even know now let me start from they don't even know themselves you can't go to a place when you don't even know who you are. Because you can say, well, I want to go there. What if I try to not the place you're supposed to be going? <laughs> you know, you know, the, 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 the interesting, you know, that when I work with people on average, they're, and, they're, and, I, and I mean, it's, uh, we'll talk about it down the line. There are some things that I took. Uh, they, are, they are personality assessments. Mm. And I will get I will get this to a place in uh in the last as I would say like five years or so I've been taking a lot of those I took strength finders okay I, I took disc I took uh um insights and everything and those two things now those the first thing that I learned about myself and this really helped me with my coaching when I coach people because when I'm coaching anyone the first thing I tell them is we're gonna do your personality assessment okay we're gonna know your strength finder because one thing that personality assessment does is it helps us to know who we are yeah 
Because knowing fact, you I, are, I, did, I did one this week. <laughs> well, I've, that's, I've done that's the several, several throughout the, the years. I did one this week. A, yeah. a 300, 300 question assessment. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so I mean, because the, the first time you know who you are, you know, I've, and, and one thing also, is, you know, we're talking about perception and emotions also, because sometimes also, some, the reason why some people cannot create goals is because of lazy thinking. You know, so if you have some people, okay, have you done anything, a personality assessment? Oh, only God knows who I am. <laughs> <laughs> I've had many of those. I mean, you yeah. can't even know what you have, you know, strength and everything. Only God knows everything. No. God, even I, I, again, God does not leave us to 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 in, in dark. He wants us to search. So, so the first thing I tell people is get to know once you know because once we, once we know who you are with your personality assessment, then we do strength finder. It tells me what you do best. Because now, after you've known what you do best, then you can start asking yourself, defining where am I going. It worked a lot for me because after doing that, the moment I now, I know that on average, I'm a kind of person that I have a strategic mindset. The yeah. first, first thing I think, somebody somebody comes to me, on average, I, 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 I have the gift of perception. And the first thing I can tell everyone, this place that we are going, it's gonna, there's going to be a problem down the line. Or where we are going, this is a good place to go. And on average, nine out of 10 times it work, It works. But the challenge myself is, I know I have those gifts, but I don't know how to maximize them. Mm. So after doing all of this personality tests, do that strange finder, it now helped me to start setting goals for myself because everything starts with who we are. Until we figure out who we are, we can be, because some people will tell you, I'm going here and you're wondering, how does this even go with your journey? Because some people, it's not that they don't have goals, they have wrong goals. Or, or what they call goals basically are just uh, self-indulgence and, and, uh, and, <laughs> and, and, and feel-good factor. Mm. So, so after figuring out who we are, then we start developing, ask, asking ourselves, where am I going? Now, if I bring this to my life, does that align with my journey? And I will tell you, I almost made a mistake some time ago. Instead of going into my coaching business and everything, I almost bought a restaurant. Ooh. And over time, I realized, but I'm, I'm not, I'm, I wasn't caught for that. <laughs> but that took me to understand who I am, what I do best, and then being able to stick to it. Yeah. And being able to kind of keep going in the area that I want to go and everything. Because again, we are all different. We have different strengths. What I've learned is, I'm, a, I'm more of a thinking person. Yeah, me too. And if, I, if, I, if I'm a thinking person and then you kind of get yourself into goods and services business, nine out of 10 times you fail. Yeah. Now, if I say, maybe if you go to say your service, but if I think, but being able to know who you are, what you do best, it helps to set the right goals. Yeah. And again, not setting goals on average also, because again, I know growing up, I know I've told myself the things that I want to be. Mm. Again, those are again, even though they are far away and everything, but I told myself there are things that here I will not touch these things. And till today, I don't touch them because I was able to set for myself. Now, I, I, okay, I'll give an example. I was in, in Nigeria just yesterday, maybe in the I mean, in the US, and they will say you are in a eighth grade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or ninth grade. So, you know, you know when I do this exam that gets you into senior secondary to choose, are you going to science? Are you going to heart and everything? In my junior, in my yeah, I was a very, very good soccer player. I was good in my neighborhood and everything. Everybody looked for me to be on their team. I was that good. But I got to a time, I had to make a decision. You know, in Nigeria, basically, you are growing up, you have to choose between going to school and playing soccer. Yeah. And I they, tell they myself... Don't go, they don't uh, go together. <laughs> exactly. And I tell myself, you know, my parents are not rich and everything. If I, my chance of making it out of soccer is very slim, I told yeah. myself I'm going to school. Yeah, mm. I have to make that decision because I know, okay, and I told myself I want to go in this direction and everything, and that really helped me. But sometimes what we found is naturally these days, human, I mean, I will say, I will, not, I will not say everyone because there are some young people that you meet, they, they know where they are going. Yeah. But we've become very yeah. lazy in our thinking. Yeah. 
we want people, other people to think for us. And somebody will come and ask me and sometimes, okay, what should I do? And I'm asking myself, my job is not to coach <laughs> you on what you do. My job is to help you know who you are, what you do best, and you choose what you want to do. Do, yeah. Because, we, yeah. because we've become lazy in our thinking of setting goals for ourselves. We've become lazy in our thinking of knowing who we are. We become lazy in our thinking of keep digging deeper and deeper and deeper again and understanding the truth of who we are supposed to be. A lazy, a lazy, a person with a lazy mindset cannot set goals. Goals require you to go into a different realm entirely. If you just want to be on Facebook, on social media, and keep doing that every single day and look for your information there and just keep yapping on everything, you cannot set goals. You have to be disciplined. Yeah. To set goals. Yeah. Mm. And that's kind of where what we are saying these days. That's why many people without goals, discipline is not there to set goals. Yeah. See, there are so many, there are so many small, small things that we need that we really need to work on as a as a people. You know, uh, I'm not. We are not saying that uh, people in the West all do all do all the all the right things. No, but uh, at least they have a sizable amount of people who do the right thing that carries every other people along you know uh, yeah. so we need we need to raise the level of people who are doing the right things in africa so yes. again africa this century is africa's century and uh, I agree. It's, imp it's important that we need to we work on it to make sure we get there you know we talked a little bit about, about truths and per perception before. Now, another thing I, I wanted to mention was that uh, these days, people always talk about uh, my truth. Okay. Uh, now, there's my truth, which is very common these days. And then there's the truth. How what was the difference between those thing, two things? My truth or the truth and how important are these uh for proper functioning society you know i will start from the first one about issue of my truth mm. it, this is i will say this is my opinion and everybody can cross check it whichever way they want my truth is convenient it's a convenient way of circumventing actually the truth. Okay. <laughs> you, you know, you know, you know, the cases I can, I mean, even for example, I can know something is really true, but because I want to lie to myself, deceive myself, deceive everyone, and I can tell this is my own truth and I'm holding on to it. Mm. The, the real truth on average is not convenient. It takes a tough mind to really say, this is the truth, the real truth, and I will walk through it, I'll figure it out, and I will get going. But, if, but these days, because again, we've gotten to a world whereby everything has become a little bit of, hey, well, uh, whatever I want to do, I do it. Whatever, whichever way I want to go, I go there. And we've become more of uh, focusing on precisely what we want. And that's why we've gotten into a lot of my truth. And if you look at the world today, there are so many truths out there. Yeah. In, yeah. And, and, and again, we, we are talking about the, exactly the same topic. For example, I mean, you look at what happened in the Nigerian election and everything and all this stuff. Look at how many truths came out. <laughs> that's why societies don't function. Because any, you, you know, they talk, they talk about the house of lies. Mm. It always collapses. Yeah. Most of the my truth that we see today, they are lies. And we tell ourselves uh, this is what it is because it's convenient. We don't have to think. We don't have to really do more work to really get into the, the real truth. That's why these days we are getting into all of these difficulties. That's why it's becoming worse and worse because, again, there are some people that also thrive on giving people the truth that they want them to believe. Yeah. And when they give us that truth, we turn into our own truth. What do they do? They take advantage. I posted something sometimes ago. I, I was talking about the rise of, of the people of the deceptors. Mm. Because I didn't, I didn't see you that. Know, you know, 
Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, it's, it's probably like a couple of months ago. Okay. I mean, I was that, they, I was actually walking in. The, I was taking a walk in the evening, and that thing just came to my mind. And I was looking at the kind of world where we are right now, whereby what happened is the fact that people are desperate for the truth. Now, the now the institution they used to be you, people used to believe so much in schools, in governments, and everything. All these institutions, what happened is what happened is they they they, do, they, they are not finding the answers they want from that place. Yeah. Now, what happened? Some people are desperate for power. And what do they do? They come to give people the truth that they want to hear. Again, yeah. my truth. Yeah. The moment people get they get that, now they forget that those people that, that give them that truth, what they are looking for, they are taking their power away from them. Take truth from anybody. You've taken their power away from them. Because you've taken their ability to control situations, now you can control them. If you look at most of the political system these days around the world, what do we see? My truth. My truth. My truth. Yeah. My truth. But what actually yeah. they, they are calling their own truth is somebody else's lie that was sold to them. Mm. Mm. So, but until all of us go back into looking for the real truth, society is not getting any better. Wow. Because also, lies always collapse. You see, I, I, th I think, I think, Social media is good, but social media has helped us accelerate all this bogus, my truth, everywhere. Yeah. Sometimes I just ask myself, before 2013, when social media algorithms went well, haywire, eh? we're not we're, we're not suffering what we're suffering currently. You know, I just I just don't know how we can uh, minimize the the, the uh, damage that this wow. these things will cause because uh, it has made. Everybody is, is now an expert, you know. If somebody knows, yeah. re, read some some posts from Facebook or Twitter, or whatever, and they suddenly become experts on, on the on the matter, you know. <laughs> See, me, I like reading. Okay, I'm sure you 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 should have noticed it by, by now because I've uh, yeah. talked about reading, reading, reading. Mm -hmm. I really I like I books. like reading. See this, this table we are I'm in, I'm on, I have books on the, <laughs> everywhere on the table. So I like to encourage young Africans to read. And uh, I hope asking my guests like you to recommend books to them. I hope uh, they, are, they are picking those books, getting them. I uh, hope uh, in, in a year, I would have uh, encouraged so many people to at least pick up a book, a couple of books and read. Yeah. So I want you to recommend five books. Okay. So please, right. what, what five titles do you recommend to my audience? And please put your 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 book in in there. Okay, all right. Well, uh, I'll, let me start from my book. Uh, okay. It's called "Caring: The Soul of Leadership." And when I wrote that book, it's not only for leaders. I said it's for individuals because that is self leadership. Okay. Until you can lead yourself, you can lead others. So that's exactly. something because again, <laughs> you have to figure out your own life. So that's one book that I would say. Uh, one one book that I would encourage everyone to read is The Power of Positive Thinking. No, oh, okay. Uh, what's his name now? It's up there. Uh, yeah. 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 I've forgotten his name, yeah. Uh, so that, that's one book. That, Peel. Uh, Peel. Uh, 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 yeah, I, th I think, uh, uh, is it Normel Peel? Normel like Peel, yes. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah, so uh, the second one that I would say is As a Man Think It. Up there, yeah, James Allen, you, yes, powerful, very small, 
powerful. Very powerful. Powerful. Yeah. And and the reason why, I'm, because number one, these books are not very long books mm -hmm. because it's easier for everyone to start reading and start picking them up and everything. Yeah. If you want audio book also, that's great too. Um, I will also talk about the wealth mindset. Okay. I don't have that. <laughs> okay. The wealth mindset is one of the books we're buying because what it does is it, it, it talks about how to generate wealth because again, we have all this lazy way of just uh, put one and you get 1 million tomorrow. That's, that's, <laughs> no, that's, but, it, but, but, but what I found itself is wealth itself is a mindset. Mindset, yes. It's not what is in your pocket. What I've learned is a person that is that has so much money today can become poor tomorrow if they have a poverty mindset. Yeah. So wealth mindset is a thing. I know I've, I've probably given four, but I have yeah. two more and everything. Yeah. So I have the, the, yeah, the more the better. I talk about one the other time. I talk about strength finders, strength finder 2.0. I encourage because that one has an assessment behind it. Okay. That yeah, book I, says I, that, that I, 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 I get. It's a book. What's it's it, a book. title? Yeah, it's, it's Strength Finder 2.0. Okay. Strength Finder 2.0. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so one, at the back of that book, there's an assessment there. But there is something that I want to bring up about, about that book that, you know, I like, again, I was talking about, I said, one of that book transformed my life. It said that we live in a deficit minded society. Mm. It said that, it said, all they see is everything that is wrong with us. No, the question is not what is wrong with you. The question is what is right with you. So that it helps you to focus on what you do best. Very good. Very good. So that those words are the one that kind of, you know, before I used to think about what I cannot do very well, mm -hmm. things that I'm not very good at. So you know what? Forget that. Let me focus on what I do what best. What I can do. Because that's yeah. where, again, the strength again, is. Because that also, that gets into the world mindset. Once you focus on what you do best, that's where you perform at your peak. Okay. Now, it doesn't mean you can't grow in other areas, but you don't focus too much on what you are not good at. You focus yeah. on what you are good at, and then you get people that are good at other things to support To do it you. for you. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Now, the last one that we talk about is very common. It's out there. It's in the, it's in the Bible. But book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. Those two books, I tell everyone, I don't care whether you're a Christian, you're a Muslim, whatever. Don't read it from a religious perspective. Yeah. See, read it from this is a common way to live life. Yeah. Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, from the man, and these were written by the by the that by the, 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 the wisest man that ever lived. Yeah. You, uh, you know, one thing that I've seen about those two books, it, it teaches about common living. How do you live your life wisely? You don't make silly mistakes. You do the right thing. You also live right by people that are by you and everything. It teaches us all of those things. And I, like, again, like I said, don't read from religion because religion will always color your, it gives you a color your, your eyes. Yeah. But when you read it from a, a human perspective, and if you, in most of the time, if you don't read from King James Version because it's, it can be complicated a little yeah, bit. Yeah, the, 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 the language is... Yeah, the language is borrowed from the amplified version. That breaks it down a lot of things. You know, there is one that I kind of want to quickly jump into that I want to talk about it in, in, yeah. that, in those books that people always make a mistake. When Solomon said, money answers all things. People were saying, well, he wrote that when it was when they backslided and everything. He said, no, he didn't backslide. He knew what he was talking about. Now, he didn't say money solves everything or money does everything. He says money answered all things. Ask me today. If you are sick today, you have money. You go to yeah. the best hospital in Doctor. the world. Yes. It doesn't mean you will survive the sickness. Yes, but at it least you, you, you. you have a, cha a chance. You have a chance. Now, you have any problem today, you have money, you can say, I have money. You can do, money will answer every single question. Now, but money will not solve every single question. Yeah. That's why I said, when you are reading, don't read from religious perspective, Read from human living and let it let your mind open up. Yeah. Yeah. So very good. Very good. Uh the last uh, five guests, including you, three of you have recommended the Bible. Okay. 
And I will tell you, I'm not, I'm not religious, uh, but once upon a time I was, and uh, I have read the Bible over and over. So I know how powerful the Bible is. So yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. I want you to advise young Africans. I want them to be able to add value to their community. So what's your advice to them to enable them to add value to themselves and their community? Well, um, in that case, the first thing that I will say, my actually my number one advice and probably the only advice I will give them is stop looking for instant gratification. Hmm. It is what has destroyed our world today. Everything is instant, instant phone, instant message, instant this, instant. And don't get me wrong, I love, I use all those instant and everything. <laughs> but one thing is, Every, every time we focus on instant gratification, we miss out on the biggest part of things. That's why you see young people today, they, they, you see you, someone that has worked for 40 years, you want to be as rich as them today. Yeah. Oh, someone, oh, someone, has, someone has forecasts and everything. I want to have forecasts tomorrow. And then what do you do? You start selling money from people or somebody employ you in a business. In essence, you steal the money. And let me get into that because on average, you see, um, I was talking to someone about reasons why people don't invest in Africa. Even people that live in this part of the world, they don't invest so much in Africa yeah. anymore. Yeah. You invest, you employ people. Yeah. The first thing the person is looking for is to steal money from you yeah. and to destroy that business. Yeah. They are looking for instant gratification. But what they don't realize is the fact that you ruin that business, you go jobless. So, so if, if, if the mindset is always instant gratification, I want it, I want it now, the end is destruction. And that's the reason why you see many young people, they are not useful to their community because everything they are looking, they are looking for now, 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 and everything, they go into politics as well, politics as well with the same mindset. Yeah. The, the mindset of, I, I mean, I, I've, I've, I want to make money right now. You know, I, I watch one show sometimes ago. It's a, it's a pretty funny. It's a, it's an interesting show because I I love watching political shows. Uh, it's yeah. So it's so 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 this guy he was talking about. He said, "Was it was, was the title of that show?" Uh, I'm trying to remember the show. Uh, it's it's uh state state of the union. Okay. State. So 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 this guy was. He said he said I can't believe this guy actually left. Uh, to be to to be uh to, to be to be to be my to be my because that guy is the chief whip of the U.S. Uh, house, so I can't believe he, uh, he was looking for money when actually he should be looking for power. Now the guy that was saying that thing is a very corrupt guy. <laughs> Let me <laughs> wrong. But, but what I tell people is I said again this is something I, I bring up. It doesn't matter how bad the person is. People always take time they focus so much on how bad the things they've done. I focus on what lessons can I apply from this person to use it the right way. Mm. I said that because I said the case is sometimes it's when you build knowledge, you build experience, you build strength and everything. Instead of looking for money immediately, you've put yourself in a position whereby people are looking for you and are paying you for that knowledge. Yeah. But if all that you are looking for is how do I steal money from here, from here, from here, over time, money becomes useless over time you don't have all that you're supposed to have yeah that's why my, i always encourage young people stop looking for instant gratification stop it focus on what can last a long time build yourself build your experience build your strength i'm not saying money money like i said earlier i always tell people i said money is good but money is not everything you will make way more money down the line when you yeah. build yourself, when you strengthen yourself, when you put yourself in the right position, when you speak and people want to listen to you. So people will probably, you know, there are times we are by the place we are by. If I want to talk, nobody wants to hear what I want to say. <laughs> these days, somebody here, but these days, somebody can call me and they can say, I tell someone, I said, 
if you give me a job that you are thinking, I said, if I do a work for you for one hour and I get $200 from you, it's because I'm doing you a favor. Yeah. But it took me time to get to that level. Of course. You have to take, you, you have to go through because you have to build experience, build knowledge, know what you are talking about and everything. A time comes whereby, I mean, I, I, I believe that very soon I'll even be making way more and everything. But life is a process. Don't skip the process. Don't skip the line. For instant gratification, all it does is over time, it dumps you on the side of the road because you, do, you have no place to go. You have no roadmap. Yeah. But, but focus so much on what is down the line. It doesn't mean you don't you gain along the way. Don't skip the line. Don't skip the process. Don't want to become rich today. Even people that you see that are very that that they are, they are stealing money to become rich. Don't follow that line. Because focus on the end. Because you, you know there, there are some people that I've seen where by I didn't mean that they took their time. The business are destroyed. The business owner had plans for them. Yeah on how to make them great, make them better. But they saw from that business, they went back to penury. Yeah. So uh, that's my that's that's my only advice for young people. Yeah. It's a it's a great it's a great Most one. Kids. It's a great one. Thank you. So my last question. Like I said, I've said it I said it to us already. Let me say say it again. This century is for Africa. Yeah. So what's your vision for Africa in 30 years' time? Yeah. Uh, my vision is that Africa will become a destination for people around the world. A destination in terms of wealth, in terms of breakthrough, business, in terms of knowledge, that Africa will become that. Because Africa has all it takes to be that there is i mean i've not seen any african country that's not does not have anything to offer i've not seen one even even if you look at even the ones that are landlocked they have yeah. natural resources and here's the interesting thing also we have population yeah and if, if you look at if you look at it i think it, more than 50 percent of, of africans are below the age of 30. yeah so what does that tell you the manpower is there and it's and, and here's the here's interesting thing also, it's not just manpower that are useless, smart people. And that's my my hope is the fact that it becomes a destination. That's my vision because I think it has all it takes. There is no reason for them to be making world decisions and Africa will not be invited. There's no reason for that. Based on, you know, I was, I wrote something one day, I said, my heart bleeds for a continent that has everything to be begging. Mm. I mean, I mean, let's, let's, let's break it down. What is this that Africa need? If Africa say, you know what, today we want to be on our own. We don't want to relate with anybody around the world. We just want to be trade among African countries. Virtually everything we need, we have. Other concerns we beg in Africa because Africa has what they are looking for. Yeah. Now I'm not saying, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a nationalist or something. I'm just giving us an example yeah. whereby and everything. But why should a continent that has all of those things be begging? Why should the sons and daughters of those continents be looking for a place become slaves in other places? It's a food for thought for our leaders. Yeah. Those 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 questions are. We need to think about, yeah. I hope they think about it because, again, my premise of everything about whether it's community or society is if the head is rotten, mm. the body cannot be healthy. We need yeah. leaders to, whether, I mean, it, they need to really reorient re re themselves. There is, well, I mean, for example, I, I look at it. And I, I'm uh, sorry, I'm taking a bit of your time. No, I no, go on. To say go on. I look at the leaders of the Arab world, UAE, Saudi Arabia, uh, Qatar, and everything. Look at how rich they are. 
but they are, they, but their citizens are, sort of, are not begging for food either. Yeah. Which means our leaders, if our leaders actually take care of our resources, they can be richer. They can. They can. You know, I was saying some, I was telling somebody one day, I said, Dangote actually should be 10 times richer than he is because of the continent where he is. I didn't mean that Africans have buying power. Yeah. Dangote will be richer. What makes the vessels and the likes richer? Americans have buying power. Even sometimes we have uh, Americans buy things they don't even need. <laughs> <laughs> but because they, you know they can afford it. I mean, I, 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 I can say today, I need a new car. I go to the dealership, I drive a new car to my house. It's as simple as that. Now it's on loan and everything, but I will pay off. But when I'm paying off, who am I paying? The rich people. Isn't yeah. that the way it works? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the way it is. So if we sit down and look at it and everything, if our leaders want to be rich, improve the lives of people, invest our resources, don't squander it. Yeah, that's it. Wow, DG. Thank you so, very, very much for being a great guest of the Think Big for Africa podcast. Thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate this opportunity and I'm hoping I've added value to my fellow Africans, and uh, again, Africa, destination where people want to be. Very good. Very good. Push it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Yeah. Bye-bye.